undereating or overeating, sleeplessness, increase undereating or overeating, sleeplessness, increase smoking and drinking, and drug abuse. There also seems to be a relationship between stress and absenteeism and between stress and labor turnover. One can imagine that these symptoms are very costly to organizations. Absenteeism and labor turnover have direct cost implications for organizations. A person who is suffering from sleeplessness is unable to perform up to standard. Drinking and drug abuse lead to people being unable to concentrate on the task at hand, which might lead to industrial accidents. Drinking and drug abuse may also contribute to absenteeism. Work performance effects. Sometimes mention is made of the so-called inverted U relationship between stress and performance. Low levels of performance accompany low levels of stress. As the level of stress increases, the level of performance also increases until it reaches an optimum point. If the level of stress increases beyond this point, the level of performance goes down again. There are exceptions to the general rule that stress seems to lower job performance. There are some people who are able to turn out exceptional performance at times of experiencing high stress, perhaps because they have become experts in the tasks being performed. Perhaps these experts view high levels of stress as challenges rather than threats. In many situations, stress can indeed interfere with performance. However, its precise effects depend on several different factors such as complexity of the task being performed, personal characteristics of the individuals involved, their previous experiences with this task. Managing work-related well-being. The following general guidelines are provided regarding the role of the organization in ensuring well-being at work. Ergonomics. Ergonomics is concerned with the design of a work system in which work methods, machines, layout, equipment, and physical environments such as lighting, heat, noise, and vibration are compatible with the physical and behavioral characteristics of the worker. Physical ergonomics focuses on the design of the physical workplace. Cognitive ergonomics focuses on the fit between mental requirements of a job and human abilities. Organizational ergonomics focuses on system risks. Assessment and evaluation of employees. Personnel assessment and evaluation should be used to ensure an optimal fit between the values and goals of the employee and those of the organization. Wellness audits which focus on both positive and negative aspects of work-related well-being should be implemented and feedback should be given on individual, group, and organizational levels. Job redesign and work changes. The redesigning of jobs could reduce the exposure to psychosocial risks and increase employee motivation. Jobs could be designed to reduce exposure to stressors such as work overload, role demands, and conflicts. Furthermore, lacking job resources such as job control and support from co-workers and supervisors should be addressed. Repetitive tasks could be reduced through the technique of job enlargement. Leadership a good leader is able to not only prevent job stress and burnout among his or her followers, but also to enhance motivation and engagement. Leaders should a. Acknowledge and reward good performance instead of exclusively correcting substandard performance. b. Be fair. c. Put problems on the agenda and discuss these in an open, constructive, and problem-solving way both in work meetings and in individual talks. 
D. Inform employees on a regular basis and as early and completely as possible in face-to-face -face meetings about important issues. E. Coach employees by helping them with setting goals, planning their work, pointing out pitfalls, and giving advice as necessary. F. Interview employees on a regular basis about their personal functioning, professional development, and career development. Leaders should express their commitment by giving high priority to safety matters at meetings, allowing high status for safety officers, and emphasizing safety training. Training. In addition to being purely directed at the job content, training programs that promote employee health and well-being should also be directed at personal growth and development. For instance, they should include time management, stress management, personal effectiveness and self-management. Work training is a learning process across the entire lifespan that is ultimately related to the employee's job performance. This could be achieved by increasing employees' efficacy beliefs through mastery experiences, vicarious experience, verbal persuasion, and positive emotional states. Organizational structure and climate. Changing the organizational structure and creating a supportive organizational climate can be implemented by decentralizing functions and by moving the responsibility for decision-making to the levels where people are able to make decisions regarding their own work. If employees see the appraising of performance and the subsequent rewards they receive as being fair, they will tend to experience less stress. Job security. Especially during hard economic times, job security is high on the priority list of employees. Job security lessens the stress generated by the possibility of unemployment caused by layoffs or retrenchments. Career development. By attending to the career development of employees, organizations show that they care about the needs and aspirations of their employees. Career development provides employees with the opportunity to develop their skills and abilities and to reach their career goals. Organizational roles. It is management's responsibility to reduce conflict by clarifying organizational roles. Each employee should know what is expected of him or her and should also have the necessary means for carrying out his or her responsibilities. Employee Wellness Programs Employee wellness programs focus on physical and mental wellness. Regarding physical wellness, services can be provided for people to take part in fitness programs, to lose weight, to control their diet, to quit smoking and to control their intake of alcohol and drugs. Regarding mental wellness, counseling services and access to the services of clinical psychologists and psychiatrists can be provided. Dysfunctional behavior at work. Next, various types of dysfunctional behavior are discussed, including absenteeism, presenteeism, theft, sexual harassment, bullying, and alcohol and drug misuse. Absenteeism. Absenteeism is used as a mechanism to withdraw from aversive situations at work. Absenteeism could be divided into two types, namely absence for medical and non-medical reasons. Sickness absenteeism is defined as absence attributed by the employee to illness or injury and accepted as such by the employer. Absence levels in the UK are measured in two main ways. The first comprises periodic surveys by bodies including the Confederation of British Industry and the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development.
The mean absence rate for 2002 was reported as 3.9%, down from 4.4% in 2001, and roughly similar to the two previous year's surveys. The rate was higher in the public sector than the private, 4.6% against 3.1%. The second method thus uses questions to individual employees through the General Household Survey and the Labor Force Survey. Estimates from the latter put the average absence rate at only 2%, while figures from the former indicate little in the way of an overall trend since the 1970s. Higher rates in the public sector are confirmed. The costs of absence are estimated at an average of 567 Great Britain pounds per employee per year. However, studies over many years show that rigorous measurement remains very rare, so that these estimates are really averages of guesses. A study in Europe showed that about 60% of the hours lost due to absenteeism were lost because of illness. In the UK, 177 million days were lost in 1994, which represented a cost of 11 million Great Britain pounds. Absenteeism leads to both direct costs, such as sick pay, overtime, cost of overstaffing, management and administration costs, and loss of service provision, and indirect costs, such as disruption to service provision, reduced patient care quality, cost of recruitment, selection and training of replacement staff, lower morale and pain, and suffering for those who are absent. Absence is a problem related to a minority of employees. However, it seems that certain groups within a workforce such as young people and women, are major contributors to absenteeism rates. Long-term absence is likely to be associated with medical problems, while short-term absence is likely to be caused by social and personal factors rather than illness. The factors listed in Focus Box 13.3 might cause absenteeism. Focus 13.3 Causes of absenteeism Work and role design Absenteeism is likely to be higher in contexts where work is boring or roles are unclear. Workload and stress Absenteeism is likely to be higher where workload is excessive or where people experience job insecurity and occupational stress. Organization and team size Absenteeism tends to be higher in larger organizations and teams. Organizational culture and climate. Absenteeism tends to be higher if the management style is perceived as aggressive or uncaring. Physical demands. Absenteeism tends to be higher when a job involves physical demands such as lifting objects and pushing heavy loads. Injuries at work. A high incidence of work-related injuries may result in absenteeism. Lifestyle factors. Alcohol and drug-related problems may result in absenteeism. Persistent or recurrent conditions. Health conditions which are persistent or recurrent may result in absenteeism. Family or domestic commitments. Employees often experience domestic difficulties, which may result in absenteeism. Travel difficulties. Workers will tend to be more absent when the work location is not easily accessible. Organizations could do the following to manage the problems of absenteeism. A. Communicate the absenteeism policy to all employees. B. Optimize recruitment, selection, and induction. C. Maintain an effective performance management system, rewards and incentives. D. 
Optimize the design of jobs and the organization. And E. Implement occupational health initiatives. Presentism. Presentism is defined as the practice of coming to work when the individual should not, which results in physically being present at work, but functionally absent. Presentism is less apparent than absenteeism and results because an employee is distracted, tired, depressed, or ill. Presentism is regarded as a measure of lost productivity costs due to employees actually showing up for work but not being fully engaged and productive mainly because of personal health and life distractions. Three types of presenteeism are shown in Focus Box 13.4. Types of presenteeism